Well, hi everyone, I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop, and welcome back to the dining room table of the 1925 Bungalow. Happy Easter Monday! Now, I certainly hope you're going to join me tonight at 8 o'clock right here on this channel for the first live sale of the month, and we have an extra Monday this month, which means you get three live sales, just me solo. And then forget the ones in between, or don't forget the ones in between, ah, uh, with Patrick and uh, David. Yeah, well, you, you guys know what that's all about. Hey, let's look and see what's going to be sold tonight. Oh, I hope you get to watch this video before the sale tonight. I'm just getting it out a few hours before the sale. And this won't be everything. No, no, there'll be maybe 10 more items tonight. So you'll have to be surprised. Let's just jump right in and see what's what. Oh my goodness, look at Midnight Blue by the Cambridge Glass Company. The etch is number 727, as far as I know. Cambridge never gave it a name. It was just etch 727. Now, you know, you might see people online calling it powder puff or... or uh, pumpkin or, you know, but Cambridge, you know, as far as I know, I don't know of any other name other than Etch 727. These remind me of pumpkins or some kind of little wild thing that used to grow. I don't remember. Used to see when I was a kid, I think we would pick those things and throw them at each other on our bicycles. I don't know. Anyway, it's gilded. The delicate color is called Mid Midnight Blue, I think. It's a very, very delicate color blue, as you can see. And uh, I just love that. So that would be so beautiful on your dining room table. Let's stick with the Cambridge for a minute and jump over here to their more popular, more well-known rose point pattern, which is there. We have a lovely center bowl, uh, a four-footed center, bo center bowl there, a serving bowl, whatever you'd like to do with it. And that's in the rose point, popular rose point pattern. Lots of mothers and daughters collected that <clears throat> and used it. We're jumping all around, so we might as well continue jumping all around from the 1930s kitchen. You're gonna get Granny's wonderful old rolling pin. I wonder how many snickerdoodles that produced. And the old coffee pot. Now I'll say for decorative purposes only because somebody left some water in it and it's a little rusted. So, unless you like a little extra iron in your coffee, um, we'll just say that it should be left on the stove as a piece of decoration. This is reproduction. Well, I shouldn't even say reproduction. It's modern jadeite. Um, so, yeah, all right, reproduction. But no chips, no cracks, and you've got little roses on there, and so this is an a, a opportunity to get some jadeite for you that you don't have to uh, worry too much about breaking it. If you should, ha should happen to do so. There's a cake pedestal back there. That's an old EAPG antique piece. And, well, I don't even think I have look that pattern up yet. I'm going to have to try to do that before tonight. I'm running out of time. Look at the snowflakes. It's pressed glass, but it's nice quality. has good clarity to it, and it really sparkles. Okay, there's no lead in that. We're not, we're not talking about lead crystal here, just antique pressed, which is still nice. Uh, you want a pop of color in your 1930s kitchen? There you'll have it with this teapot. One little tiny pin prick of a chip on the spout. It's hard to find these spouts without a little bit of a chip on them. 
This came in different colors. Oxford stoneware made in the USA. That's a nice one. No cracks, no crazing. You can use that. Here in the front, I'm going to pair these two pieces together, although they did not start off life together. They are cousins from the same era. This is your old sort of late Victorian milk glass. That could be the bottom of a butter dish missing its top. Hey, let's call it a dresser tray now, a small one. Mm -hmm. And it always seems to have this sort of chippy paint, which is really for these uh, in good condition. And then here also, we're gonna throw this in with it. The paint is a different color and it still retains quite a bit of it. And I didn't repaint or retouch either one of these. Um, they're not, they are not chipped <clears throat> or cracked. And they go back to, oh, 1900. Art Deco Chrome. Not only is it a serving dish, but it's got its, lid. it's got its lid, which you can turn upside down and use as a serving bowl that will sit flat on your table. Made in Brooklyn by Farber Brothers. This is Chrome Craft piece. It's a divided serving dish with butterscotch bakelite handles here and black rings. Very modern. And I've never, ever had one which retains its lid. And in fact, unless you look through the old catalogs, if I had found just that, I would have never even suspected that it came with a lid, but it surely did. Now, that is pressed glass with no lead. That is American cut glass with lead. Notice the difference. It's twice as heavy and look at the brilliance. So we can clearly see the difference. This is a beautiful four part divided little dish for you to serve candy or various little olives and things like that. Pearl onions at the table. That's pretty. You could put sauce. You could do all kinds of things with that. I think I'd use it for candy. It's very, very nice. And uh, as I said, a nice heavy piece of cut American Brilliant Glass. Beautiful piece. That's going to be available tonight. Let's get down in here and look at how beautiful and delicate the paintwork is on this cream and sugar, which have, have been hand painted. The sugar bowl with its lid in excellent condition. The creamer has a little nick out of the handle right there. So get your little gold paint at the craft store and touch that up. It's not cracked. See, we don't, I'm not worried about it breaking or falling off, but it's just got that little right there. All right, touch that up or leave it alone. Very pretty, probably Bavarian or German. There's a mark on the bottom. It might even say Nippon. I guess if we, if we looked very closely, we could see it might say Germany. Uh, very pretty. Those date back to maybe about 1920 or so. We can sort of tell by the jewel tone colors, which were so popular at that time. Moving along, we have a salt and pepper shaker in the Art Deco style. Looking like the top of the Chrysler building. Yeah. Turn it this way and put something different on there if you want. Take the salt and the pepper out. But on this side, it is marked salt and pepper. And look, they were souvenirs from guess where? Mm -hmm. I think I know a thrifter that lives up there. All right. You know who I'm talking about? Look at this. Let's come over here. Uh, and tonight's piece of carnival glass is uh, a Fenton footed bonbon. Check that out. I see these bonbons a lot just looking like that, right? No foot. In fact, sold one last week, I think. 
Uh, it's green. Of course, we know the color green because of the base color, emerald green there. Beautiful iridescence, double handled, crimped with a thorny rose pattern. I don't know what the collectors call it, but it's definitely got a rose with thorns wrapping all around. It is in excellent condition. And we know that that goes way back. 1910 to 1925, something like that. Look at all the frogs. I'm gonna sell all of them together in one lot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Five of them are the same size. Two of them are slightly different. Jeanette is the one that usually made all of these little powder jars. There's one with a little deer on it. And a uh, little flea bite on his ear. Oh well, otherwise in good shape. Look at these yellow roses. It's transfer wear, so not an expensive piece, but it's pretty for summertime. You're gonna have somebody over for lunch. Serve your sandwiches on that, your little sandwiches. And what does it say on the bottom? It's got sticky, nasty tape from the store and no mark. All right, and then I also have for you this lovely decanter, this lovely Eddie Cantor, I'm sorry, decanter set with four of the glasses. Wow. It's sort of like a bell shape. Let's slide this out and let you see. Isn't that beautiful? All originally hand painted in the factory, just like that, with its stopper on the top. Ooh, that looks like something Margaret Hamilton would like to get her. That reminds me of the, uh, I'll get you, my pretty, right? Okay, anyway, that was a bad impersonation. Isn't that lovely? With four, They're, they are not chipped or cracked and they all match. All right, give your guests a little glass of sherry before lunch. Yeah, and then you can get the card party started. I skipped over pink, pink. Pink, pink, you stink. We have a center handle. Oops, serving tray. Typical etched flowers. You know, the kind of thing that you see from the uh, Depression era. That's in good shape, unless I chip it before the show tonight. Uh, we have two dishes here. We'll probably do, oh, I don't know. I'll either let you have your choice or sell them one at a time. Anchor Hawking Philby in Sapphire Blue. We're all familiar with that. Likewise, we are all familiar with the old Pyrex, also from circa 1930. It's etched. I love these handles. These very easy to pick these lids up and down. Uh, this, of course, being older, but both of these are oven glass, right? Fire King tempered uh, oven glass. At least the Philby is, yeah, it's, yeah, it is Fire King. And of course, um, Fire King is not a company. It is a line that was produced by Hawking, which is glass that can go in the oven. And then of course, we're all familiar with Pyrex. Okay. And then last, lastly, a sewing basket. Uh, let's get over here. Now, the string here to hold, or not the string, but the cord to hold the lid on is in really bad condition. So you decide what you want to do. Um, I'm going to leave the tattered scraps of it in there and you reattach it uh, any way you want. There's a beautiful decal on the top and the same decal on the inside. We have all the little fence posts here for your spools of thread. And we can see the maker right here. I think I already 
let you see this in one of the thrift halls, but we'll let you see it again. Princess Algonquin, Illinois. I remember back in the 1980s staying at the old Algonquin Hotel. Or was it the Iroquois? Anyway, it was one of them in New York City. Back in the 80s when it was really scruffy. Okay, let's back up again, this time from this side. And I shall let you see that all of those items plus additional ones that I can throw together will be uh, available tonight at 8 o'clock right here on the Old Curiosity Shop channel. Okay, friends, I'm looking forward to seeing you. Yep. Come on now. You know you're just kind of like... You're going to finish up that Easter ham tonight and get those jelly beans polished off, right? Okay, so tune in. Eat your ham and your jelly beans, and we'll see you at 8 o'clock. Until then, I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop saying thank you for watching. Wait for the cat. And so long for now.